Childhood memories should be ones of laughter, adventure, discovery, and days of endless fun and surprise. But for some children, the days are long and filled with illness and pain, the results of chronic conditions, life-threatening diseases, or serious injury. For 20 years, WBNG has been working with Geisinger Janet Weiss Children's Hospital and the Children's Miracle Network to make a difference. Call to make a donation at 1-800-799-5437. During the last 20 years, we've helped raise more than $2 million. Your donations help by the highly specialized equipment, equipment like radiant warmers for premature babies, and IV pumps that can control the small doses of medicine the children need. And in addition to funding state-of-the-art equipment, donations to the Children's Miracle Network also fund the Child Life Program at the hospital that addresses the educational and emotional needs of young patients. Child Life Specialists also help the children understand the different treatments and procedures, alleviating some of the fear they experience. And of course, there is the Janet Weiss Children's Hospital itself. This was the first rural acute care children's hospital built in America. The hospital provides the latest and new technology to care for kids. Every aspect of the hospital is geared toward children, from its child-sized countertops and chairs to its bright colors and shapes. The goal of the Janet Weiss Children's Hospital is to help children overcome illness and injury and get on with the business of being a kid. It's because of your donations that Geisinger Janet Weiss Children's Hospital can be in the business of making miracles happen for children. Call now, 1-800-799-5437. It doesn't seem like it's been 20 years. I mean, I, I remember driving up here and meeting with uh, people 20 years ago at the station and, and then, you know, thinking about all the families that we've taken care of in the interim. So it seems like it's gone pretty quick for me. But working with WBNG has been a, a, great, uh, a great thing for us. It's important that WBNG TV is a part of the Children's Miracle Network because we are so involved in the community and this is just something else that we can do. We do so much, and but specifically with the Children's Miracle Network, as we say year in and year out, it helps sick and injured children in our area, and it really does. We help them raise the money they need to buy the equipment uh, and, and for some of the, the programs they run um, at Geisinger. And if we can be a part of that and help facilitate raising the money for what they need, it's, it's a great thing to do. And, that, and that's why we're involved. We do get some seriously ill children from Binghamton. A lot of the routine stuff gets cared for here, but if you need intensive care, if you need specialized surgery, if you need specialized care, you know, a lot of times it ends up coming to Danville and the Geisinger and Janet Weiss Children's Hospital. And so it's, it's been great working with WBNG that whole time. In the 20 years, the Binghamton area has raised more than $2 million for Children's Miracle Network. Two million, more than $2 million. I, I, when I heard that number a few weeks ago, I was just floored by that because I, I had no idea what the number was. But just seeing it and hearing it, it was, it's, 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 it's really incredible. But that is a testament to the people of this area that donate the money. It's not because of us, it's because of the people that actually contribute. Geisinger is a, a major corporation. It's, it's, a, it's a very big thing. But pediatrics is just one section of that. And so we compete with other uh, departments, cardiology and surgery and things like that for uh, revenues and funds. And we actually do pretty good. But when we want to add the extra things, you know, when we want to add child life, when we want to add PlayStations and DV, DVDs and DVRs and, and all the extra stuff that help make a child stay comfortable and, and go quick. 
um, we, we need the extra money to do that. Insurance companies don't pay for those kind of things. And so it's that extra that we get from Children's Miracle Network that allows us to get the latest and greatest and, and keep everybody uh, comfortable and happy and hopefully getting better and getting back home as quick as possible. The Miracle Network probably helped make her stay a lot easier. They had a private room, which again, insurances don't always cover. So Faith stayed in the room with Grace in a nice little bed and, and they made arrangements for her. Uh, and that, that comfort just made a huge difference to, because how can you leave your preteen or teen or younger child in a hospital and just have to pick up and go and go back to your other kids. So that, that was the very real piece of it. And I'm sure there's things behind the scenes that uh, Pete's GI got to benefit from Miracle Network money that I have no idea. And I think for Grace too, she she mentions like the the um, special activities and, and resources that Child Life um, offered to her to just make all of the hours when she was really sick go, you know, a little bit smoother and that was really helpful too. Mm -hmm. People should give money because there are children in our area, and I say children, from, from, you know, from newborns up to teenagers. It's not just for you know children it's it runs the gamut from you know in the NICU unit the neonatal intensive care unit up to teenagers who are either sick or they've been injured or whatever the case may be where they need they need that medical attention in the hospital and the money that people contribute goes to help those children get better and it, it, and that's the bottom line well we're continuing to expand I mean we're adding uh, some more beds we're remodeling our PICU we're changing around our waiting room you know, it seems like every year we have a new project and, a, and something new going on. We continue to have increased admissions and clinic visits and more doctors. Uh, when I took over as chairman uh, 16 years ago, we had 37 pediatricians, and now we're well over 120 pediatricians on staff. And so it's been a continual growth process, and I don't think we've hit the ceiling yet. I, I think we're still caring for a lot more people today than we were 20 years ago when we started with you guys. I'm Candace Chapman, joining you from Geisinger's Janet Weiss Children's Hospital in Danville, Pennsylvania, where they provide much-needed care for sick and injured children in our area. And WBNG is in its 20th year partnering with Geisinger and the Children's Miracle Network to make sure that this hospital can continue to provide that excellent quality of care. And joining me now is Becky Drumheller, and she's with Child Life Services. Becky, tell us a little bit about what Child Life Services provides. I will, thanks. The whole purpose of Child Life and the department and the services that we offer is to help and reduce the fear and anxiety that children have when experiencing any healthcare environment. You can imagine that kids are entering this place not feeling well and sometimes very unexpectedly with injuries. That might be painful and this is a very threatening and frightening environment, especially mm -hmm. when kids don't know what to expect or what might be happening in their treatment. So it's our job to help provide age and developmentally appropriate care for them in language and preparing them for what's going to happen. Maybe working with some toys and medical play to help them rehearse what their role is while we talk about what the doctor's role is, what the nurse's role is, mm -hmm. all the therapist's role, anyone who might be involved in that child's diagnostic screening or treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of that, we get to have all the fun things. So we're responsible for the playrooms and the special events, mm -hmm. accepting donations and providing lots of things to our families right. to help normalize the environment. All right, call 1-800-799-KIDS. WBNG is proud once again to be part of the Children's Miracle Network. Here in 2015, we're celebrating our 20th year with Children's Miracle Network and Geisinger Janet Weiss Children's Hospital here in Danville, Pennsylvania. Help by donating by calling 1-800-799-5437. Help us support the efforts to raise money for sick and injured children in our area. During our last 20 years, we've raised more than $2 million thanks to people like you. It can't be done without you, so call right now at 1-800-799-5437. 1-800-799-KIDS. 
I'm Candace Chapman, and the Children's Miracle Network 2015 celebration is underway at Geisinger's Janet Weiss Children's Hospital in Danville. Your donations help support the care of sick and injured children, and you can call 1-800-799-5437 to make a donation that helps the Janet Weiss Children's Hospital and Geisinger system do that. Now, that's one way to donate, but there's another great way that you can donate every February of, of each year, and that's through IHOP. And Heather, tell us a little bit more about what IHOP does. We give away a free short stack of pancakes, and all we ask is for a donation for it. All right. And tell us a little bit about how many pancakes you've served up. We did 2011 short stacks, so times that by three, and that's a lot of pancakes. <laughs> that is a lot of pancakes. And that is all day long, right? All day until we close, and there's usually a line out the door until we close. All right. And how much did you raise this year? $3,627. That's a great amount. Now, you also help support CMN in other ways as well. We do balloon sales, and that starts in January. And so anybody can come into IHOP and buy a balloon? Yes, we have a dollar and five dollar balloons. Okay, and you put those up for people to see? Everybody can see, and then the five dollar ones you get a coupon for, too. Oh, terrific. Thank you so much. And again, you can call 1-800-799-KIDS to help support the Children's Miracle Network. That might be for specialized equipment needed for small children. It might be for items that help a doctor explain to a child the procedure that they're going to go through or just things that help make them and their family have a more comfortable stay while they're in the hospital. Call 1-800-799-KIDS. I don't remember like very distinct being sick but I remember my parents telling me they had to like carry me places because I couldn't walk. I don't remember any of that though. You know, we had been to local primary care physicians and all that, and we had CAT scans, cat scans all, kinds, all of kinds of stuff. He just kept getting, like he said, sicker and sicker and sicker, and he just wasn't himself. We, you know, we went through, you know, different diagnosis. It was this, it was this, it was this, but yeah, we'd give him antibiotics and nothing would get better, and it's just an ongoing thing that just didn't seem to end. I was young and really wasn't sure what was going on with him, but mm -hmm. I knew he was sick or something. He came to my clinic with uh, complaints of uh, recurrent off and on fevers, not feeling well, big lymph nodes, and have been treated with uh, multiple antibiotics and uh, just not getting well. So the family was quite concerned and then at that time we decided to do some blood work and the blood work was uh, pointing towards uh, a condition which we were suspecting all along. Thursday they had us in Danville um, and like Ethan alluded to we were there they ran some tests Doctors told us go home. You know we'll let you know what's going on. Um, but that was in Danville. We stopped in Wilkesbury and already received a phone call. I looked over and I saw my mom. She was crying. I didn't really know what was up. And we just got back from a test in Danville, and they were like, they want us to come back tomorrow. They really, they said you need to come back tomorrow. We're going to do a bone marrow biopsy and go from there. I remember Dr. Ramdas coming in and being like, we found leukemia cells in your bone marrow. I was afraid the whole time that it was something like that and his <laughs> primary care wouldn't just kept poo-pooing me like I was being an overprotective. I knew something was wrong. I, Ethan, you know, to our fault, Ethan and I were both like, you know, don't, why are you thinking that? I can't. We, we never in a million years imagined it would be something like this. So Ethan was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia back in April of 2010. So the treatment for uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia involves uh, a long duration, multiple courses of uh, chemotherapy. And it's given in different cycles where uh, the initial treatment is quite intense. And as we go further down, they become less intense. There were a lot of side complications that came with the treatment. And that's, those were almost, that's where the hard part Came in. After a few weeks, uh, he started to develop some complications and uh, ended up developing a complication called tiflitis, uh, which is uh, he was having an inflammation in his intestines. And then he had a very life-threatening kind of complication, which is, we call it as the venoocclusive disease, which carries uh, close to 40 to 50 percent mortalities. I remember being on a gurney and like looking up, and this nurse walked by and she put a sign on the door, big red letters, and it said septic, or like sepsis alert or something like that. And I, I, didn't, I had no idea what that was. But when he alluded to the sepsis alert, at the time I honestly didn't know what that meant. And I asked the nurse, and I think she was kind of protecting me. She had said it's kind of a protocol, you know, to let others know. And I remember my dad holding my hand. I was just, I was pretty loopy at the time. I don't know, I was, I was going into shock is what was happening. 
So they life flighted me and they put me in like this, like astronaut suit looking thing. I got in the helicopter. I remember being extremely mad because they told me my dad couldn't ride in the helicopter with me. I was like, you're not. But I ended up having to go by myself. But the team in there, the Geisinger life flight team was really good. That day of the life flight was probably the hardest day of my life ever. Because I, like Keith had alluded to, I couldn't go with him. He was uh, in a quite sick state at that time, and, uh, and we were quite concerned. He stayed in, the, in our pediatric intensive care unit for almost close to 17 days, uh, and, uh, and had a, a lot of other uh, related complications with this. But fortunately, he was able to tide out of that complication and uh, was able to maintain his uh, treatments through the different phases of the, of the chemotherapy. The treatment for acute lymphoblastic leukemia la can last anywhere from like up to three years. So he started his treatment in 2010 and, uh, and we finished the treatment, finally finished the treatment in 2013. So one of the things which we do in our pediatric oncology is, uh, is a summer camp and uh, it's in a place called Camp Victory. So it's a one week camp in which uh, kids kind of like they forget about, about their treatments and coming to the hospital and the routines of this. And they get to kind of like spend a week with the, with the uh, other kids who are going through the treatment as well as their siblings. And it's a, it's a fun home away from home kind of uh, things in which uh, they get to do uh, things like swimming, archery, horseback riding and or just goofing around or, uh, or like uh, uh, other kind of like activities. And that was like a major turning point, going there and seeing other sick kids. And, you know, I mean, it's not a ball club you want to be part of, but to know that there's other kids there and they're going through the same thing, you can relate and you don't feel as alone. And you see kids that have finished chemo, you know, they went through the same thing you did and they're good and they're having fun. It made it easier. And the nurses and the staff, it was just a lot of fun. It's one heck of a time. It's really fun there. I mean, it's a great place. They gave me the option. They said, you know, it's your last chemo. You can leave Camp Dost and be with your family and you can take it at the hospital. And I was like, you know, this camp's really I love it here. You know, I've got good friends, my camp, I'm really close to my camp counselors. So I took one of my close camp counselors and I did it right there at camp. You know, I take in, they do the end of chemo song that I've been waiting to hear for three and a half years. Patients have the cutest, S-M-I-L-E's. Our patients have the sweetest, H-E-A-R-T's. We love to see you every day. But if you ask us, then we'll say, Pack your bags, go out the door, cause no more chemo anymore. Yay! They always told me, you know, you'll get there, you'll get that last chemo, and you'll hear that song. And I heard it, and I was like, this is, this is it. It's over. I get back to my cabin, I come around the corner, and my whole bunk is just sitting there with like streamers, and they chalked out a big finish line. And as soon as I crossed the finish line, they started squirting me with water guns, and it was just, it was a cool thing. Ethan said at Camp Dost, it was the best week of his life. You know, here he is in the middle of a chemo treatment. I had to have that, there's a light at the end of the tunnel aspect. And no matter how far away that light was, you just had to focus on seeing it. And you had to find some will to say that it will be over. When we talk about acute lymphoblastic leukemia, so we use a term called remission when we do not see the leukemia cells. And once they are past five years from the uh, initial phase of the diagnosis, that's when we call the term called technically they are cured out of the, of the leukemia. So, so again, uh, Heathen still needs to be monitored and then we do have to watch and make sure that this doesn't come back. So eventually, yes, even he's going to grow out of this and then we can call him that he's, he's cured of, uh, of his acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Three and a half years is a long road. I mean, we're still, he still goes to checkups every other month. You know, it's, we're still not quite out of the blue, but you know, it's way, way better than it was. He's doing fantastic and uh, we see him on a routine basis. Any child who has gone through the chemotherapy, we still have to watch them again to make sure that there is no recurrence of this cancer. And also we also, we are uh, we're watching for any late effects from the medications. We want to make sure he's growing appropriately and so at this moment I have to say he's thriving, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's enjoying all the, all the routine kind of like a 16 year old child will do and uh, he's very passionate about sports and, uh, and his school activities and all and so he's, uh, he's doing extremely well at this moment. From where we've seen him to where he is now and the man he's becoming is just, you know, 
it's, it's takes my breath away and puts me at a loss for words. I'm Candace Chapman at Geisinger's Janet Weiss Children's Hospital where we are in our 20th year with WBNG partnering with the hospital for the Children's Miracle Network celebration. And this celebration here in 2015, we've come a long way in helping departments like the Child Life Services and Becky Drumheller joins us to tell us what those dollars have meant over the 20 years to your department. Oh, it's incredible. We started out as a small department and have grown from two people to ten people over the course of those 20 years, much in due in part with CMN funding. And we are able to provide services to children, not just here in Danville, but also at outreach clinics closer to their homes, taking with us the expensive, highly specialized equipment that we can help children utilize and touch and explore and understand so that they have a better idea mm -hmm. of what's going to happen in their treatment and with their diagnosis and adjustment to a, an illness or an injury and all of that is possible mm -hmm. because of CMN funding. And, and it's not always necessarily equipment because sometimes now it's pets. Right, right. So we have a very active pet therapy, tender paws pet therapy program here in Danville that is supported also. Um, those volunteers are supported through mm -hmm. our CMN dollars. And many of the things that have changed over the course of the 20 years, toys have changed and the things that the kids like to play with and things that make them feel more comfortable. Okay, thank you so much. If you'd like to donate, call 1-800-799-5437. This is the neonatal intensive care unit at the Geisinger Janet Weiss Children's Hospital in Danville, Pennsylvania. I'm here with Geisinger's Chairman of Pediatrics, Dr. Michael Ryan, to talk about some of the equipment that's here and why your donations to the Children's Miracle Network is so important. For example, some of this equipment is very expensive. Some of this equipment is very expensive. The isolettes you see in the background, for instance, is what's known as a giraffe isolette, mm -hmm. and it runs about $40,000. Uh, it's state-of-the-art. It's what you have to have in your neonatal intensive care unit today, and we're replacing all our older isolettes with this brand new isolette. And that's just one example of where these donations go. Yeah, that's that's just one example. It's an expensive example. I mean, practically everything you see in this intensive care unit has been purchased by Children's Miracle Network. And it's all so that we can have state-of-the-art equipment so that children who are transferred in here who need tertiary care and specialized care are able to have the latest and greatest that we can provide for our kids. What if Children's Miracle Network didn't provide this, these funds? We'd be existing with a lot of old equipment and, uh, uh, you know, it's not the best, not what we really want for our kids. You know, as a parent, you advocate for the best for your children. And that's what we advocate as pediatricians. We advocate for the best of our, for our children. Well said. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Michael Ryan. We want you to call the number on your screen, make a donation and help. It's 1-800-799-5437. 1-800-799-KIDS. The 2015 Children's Miracle Network celebration is underway. I'm Candace Chapman. I'm joined by Julia and Rebecca from Sam's Club, and they're one of the many local businesses that help raise funds for CMN that supports Geisinger's Janet Weiss Children's Hospital. This year, how much did the Vestal Sam's Club raise? Uh, we raised $16,099. And you do that in a lot of fun ways, right? And Rebecca's going to tell us a little bit more about some of those events. We do many fun things. This year, some of our events include pie and our managers in the face, so our associates can donate money and then have a little fun with their managers. Uh, we're doing do a movie night in for our associates, so they can bring their children in, watch a movie on the wall, you know, and do a little camp out kind of deal. Um, and then we're also doing a yard sale this year that's kind of new for us. So we're asking everybody to bring stuff in that we can sell to raise money that way. So we have lots of good things organized. You sure do. And even for the, the club members and, and, and the staff, you have a very visual reminder of what the Children's Miracle Network is about. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Uh, we actually have an incubator that we are going to be uh, placing next to one of the entrance or exit doors at all times. Um, it's a visual reminder to our members that... Um, their funds are going to be used to pay for equipment such as the incubator. Absolutely. To care for sick and injured children in our area and it may be specialized equipment like an incubator. It may be other things that the hospital can use to help make the children stay more comfortable for them and their families. So call to support the Children's Miracle Network 1-800-799-5437. Lifelight transports critically ill and injured uh, children, all age groups, uh, from either hospital locations or scenes of actual incidents to the closest appropriate. There's many times it's Geisinger Medical Center or Geisinger Wyoming Valley. The importance of life light is particularly in a rural setting like northeastern and central Pennsylvania, the helicopter 
dramatically decreases the time of getting patients to tertiary care, to trauma centers, to neonatal intensive care units, to pediatric intensive care units. About 35% of the time, we fly directly to the scene of the incident. Could be Interstate 80, could be someone's backyard, uh, could be an array of different locations, and we'll stabilize the patient there along partnering up with EMS on the scene, EMTs, paramedics, stabilizing that child or the person involved in it and transporting them to where they need to go very quickly. These aircraft fly anywhere from 130 to 140 miles an hour in a straight line. An example uh, from Danville to Wilkesbury, Scranton is about 17 minutes of flight time. Dramatically decrease the out of hospital time or the time it takes to get them from the incident to an appropriate facility. Life Flight receives tremendous support from the Children's Miracle Network. Over the years, the CN has purchased transport isolettes, which we have at every bay site. That's five transport isolettes. The cost of a transport isolette, monitor, ventilator, and all the ancillary equipment is an net of $100,000. The difference these isolates make is uh, children under 10 pounds, the neonatal population, very vulnerable newborns and premature babies. We need this piece of equipment to safely transport them from scenes or hospitals to, to neonatal intensive care units. It provides a, a warm environment that we can monitor very closely. And being honest, if it wasn't for CMN, I don't think we would have this level of care at every base site, we would probably have come up with a strategic plan and put it at select bases. With the funding of the CMN, we're able to have all five helicopter bases with this equipment. I'm Candace Chapman and joining me is Trish and Steve. They're from the Walmart in Norwich. Walmart has long been a supporter of the Children's Miracle Network celebration that's now underway and you can help the Janet Weiss Children's Hospital at Geisinger support the care of sick and injured children. How much did the Walmart in Norwich raise this year, Trish? We raised $8,333. That's an incredible amount. And how do you do that, Steve? We have a couple of different programs that our associates take part in. Uh, the number one with them is our Gene Day. Every Friday, associates can wear jeans to work if they make a $2 donation to the Children's Miracle Network. But a bulk of our donations come from our really amazing customers. And how do they make their donations? Uh, they can make donations right at the cash register with every purchase. Thank you so much. And you know how important CMN is. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, it's very important because we did have an assistant manager that worked at our store and his child was um, sent to Geisinger Hospital. So it did impact our store a lot. Um, it's a family oriented store and um, I've been with the store 20 years and I'm very proud to say and be a supporter of CMN. Thank you both so much for joining us. And you can support CMN simply by making a phone call. Call 1-800-799-KIDS. That's 1-800-799-5437. All donations stay local to help local children with their care and treatment at Geisinger's Janet Weiss Children's Hospital. Again, call the number on your screen anytime, 1-800-799-KIDS. Children's Miracle Network 2015 is underway and we need you to make a donation at the number on the screen 1-800-799-5437. I'm here in the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit at the Geisinger Janet Weiss Children's Hospital in Danville, Pennsylvania. I'm with the Operations Manager and that is Maureen Lloyd. Tell us about one of the programs that goes on with funding from Children's Miracle Network. All right, the Children's Miracle Network funds the donor milk program that we use here in the neonatal intensive care unit. It's been very helpful with babies that are less than 30 weeks. We give them the donor milk because breast milk is the best thing to give to babies. It helps prevent infections and it helps with a disease called necrotizing enterocolitis. And the donations from Children's Miracle Network go to fund to pay for this milk that's brought yes, in? Yes, the funds from CNN, CMN go strictly to um, pay for that. They're, um, we get it funded every year mm -hmm. and it's it's great. Breast milk is liquid gold and this is really, it's very expensive and it's really great for the babies. And there's a lot of expensive equipment as well funded by Children's Miracle Network. Absolutely. Um, about all of the equipment that you see here within the NICU, the larger equipment, it's all been funded by CMN. We get um, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment every single year and that's with why. CMN funds. And that's why it's important to donate. Absolutely. Thank you, Maureen Lloyd. Call the number yeah. on your screen, 1-800-799-5437. 
I'm Candace Chapman joining you from the Children's Miracle Network Celebration 2015 supporting Geisinger's Janet Weiss Children's Hospital and the care of sick and injured children in our area. And also joining us is Mario from Horizons, also representing the New York Association of Credit Unions. Tell us how the credit unions donated this year. Well, at our uh, annual convention, we had a wine poll, and as a result, we made $1,058 to donate to the Children Miracle Network. That's terrific. You've been involved for a long time. Why? Yeah, we believe in uh, what the children, Children's Miracle Network does, and uh, credit unions are all about people helping people, so we're very pleased to be involved. Thank you. And again, you can help sick and injured children in our area by calling the number on your screen today, 1-800-799-KIDS. That's 1-800-799-5437. WBNG is celebrating 20 years with Children's Miracle Network. And for that length of time, Dr. Michael Ryan, the chairman of pediatrics here at the Geisinger Janet Weiss Children's Hospital, has been involved every step of the way. I understand that there is a connection from Binghamton to the Geisinger Community Medical Center in Scranton. Tell us what that connection is. Yeah, we've been very fortunate and we've made a great connection with Binghamton University and students there. They've had a dance marathon now that's uh, benefited our uh, hospital in Scranton. Mm -hmm. And that's for the playroom, you said? Yeah, the playroom, uh, we have a pediatric unit. It's a small pediatric unit at this hospital, but we have a, uh, a gorgeous, now we have a gorgeous playroom, thanks to the students at uh, Binghamton mm -hmm. University and their dance marathon. What's in the playroom? It's typical stuff. You know, when you have kids in the hospital, you try and distract them for why they're in the hospital. And so it's typical things that you would use to playroom, uh, you know, toys and mm -hmm. games and arts and crafts and video games and yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and it's really extremely well done. And because of Children's Miracle Network, we're able to do this. And Binghamton University students, we were able to do this, absolutely. All right, thank you, Dr. Michael Ryan with Geisinger. You can help by making a donation right now. Call the number on your screen, 1-800-799-5437, 1-800-799-KIDS. She started getting sick in January of 2008. We saw that she was not feeling well, but weren't sure what was going on. And then by the end of January, she pretty much couldn't even go up the stairs. I mean, she was so weak. So we didn't notice at first, and then she was really sick, and then we, that was pretty scary. I didn't have any energy, and I just kind of didn't really want to do anything. <laughs> During that time, we could see that, you know, instead of a high energy young lady, she was basically dwindling before our eyes. It was, you know, pretty, pretty scary. She was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis is a disease where her immune system attacks the, the mucosal lining of her colon. It, it's, it's actually like her immune system is hype, hyperactive. They're not really sure the cause of it. It was an odd diagnosis. I mean, we'd, I was familiar with it from taking care of patients with it. There were almost two and a half years she was on the prednisone. And um, just we would try to wean her down and then she, we would start up all, all over again. And she really wasn't rebounding. She wasn't coming, you know, she wasn't robust. She was surviving. And then um, her original GI doc here recommended that maybe we try a, a consultation at Geisinger and so that's how we got in touch with Dr. Folk. I first met Grace in the summer of 2010. Um, whenever Grace came to see me she was a 14-year-old uh, who had a known diagnosis of ulcerative colitis that was made uh, two and a half years previously. By the end of September of 2010 she was, you know, she was still on the steroids and getting worse. You know, survival was the right word. She was hanging on. So we just went down for a follow-up visit with Dr. Folk and he admitted her. We ended up quickly doing an endoscopy and a colonoscopy on her which showed um, severe uh, chronic inflammation throughout her entire colon despite being on these medicines. She was very osteopenic when she came to see us. Um, she had a uh, rather cushing weight appearance from a side effect from the steroid. You put on excess weight uh, in your face. She was in the hospital for 10 days and that's actually when we got to meet the rest of the PEDS GI team. It's a very much a, a state-of-the-art dedicated children's hospital. It was nice. I was glad that my parents could stay with me because it was scary and I, it was nice to have them there. They had told us during that hospitalization that she would not grow. She was four foot 
eight and as you can see the rest of our family were a little bit taller and so that was really hard for her. We're all pretty tall. She wanted to be tall and that, you know, she was quite upset about that. But I think I told her something like it's better a short grace than no grace at all. <laughs> well, I was really upset because I wanted to be tall and I don't know, I was just disappointed. We switched her to Remicade therapy um, and it was, it was a night and day difference that quickly happened with Grace. Um, within two months of starting the Remicade therapy, um, I had received a message from her mom stating that she was back to swimming three to four days a week for 90 minutes per session, which is just, just incredible. Um, if you would have seen the way that Grace was whenever she first came to see me. She's up to five, almost five five now, and her bones are showing improvement, and anyway, we're just really incredibly thankful for the care that Dr. Folk and the whole team has given her. This was a, just almost a miraculous thing to see. And now she pretty much, she runs circles around all of us. She's very strong, very independent, we see so many kids that have diseases very similar to Grace. We treat a lot of patients here with both Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. The Children's Miracle Network funds that we get really do allow us to pay for so many of the different equipment that's used within our GI division. Um, the endoscopies that we use, whenever Grace comes in for her um, colonoscopies for the upper endoscopies, those scopes are directly funded by Children's Miracle Network. If we did not have the money um, or the scopes, we would not be able to do the job that we do. In addition to that, we do have the child life, which is just a vital part of our patients that are coming through for these procedures. I mean, these are difficult procedures. They're having to get IVs. Um, the child life person makes a huge difference for these kids whenever they come into the hospital. Um, and that also is, is, is funded by Children's Miracle Network, so it has made a huge difference in, in our treatment of these patients. She's still going every six to eight weeks to the outpatient clinic at, uh, at Geisinger. Uh, we don't get hospitalized for that. There's a, um, there's a, it's an IV medicine, so there's an infusion. It's long because it's all day. We travel down and then stay for a couple, like three or four hours, and then drive back. Seeing where Grace came from and where she is today, um, looking at everything from her growth to her activities to the involvement with the sporting events that she participates in, with whether it's track, whether it's swimming. I hate to use the word miraculous, but it's, it really is incredible to see the change that's happened in this, in this young lady. She's, um, she's really evolved and um, it's amazing. She is just an absolutely wonderful um, individual that's done fantastic um, and she's going to do a lot of great things. You know, we used to worry about life and death and those kind of things. Now we're worried about earrings and makeup and shoes and the normal, you know, teenage girl things. And I much prefer that than to what we were facing before. Now we can't keep up with her. <laughs> she's, you know, swimming and running and she really is uh, you know, not just because she's my daughter, but she's really an amazing young lady. She will not be defined by her diagnosis. She is um, determined to have people, you know, interact with her and know her, not, not based on what she has been through, but she has definitely overcome a lot and uh, she really motivates and inspires all of us, <laughs> as well as her, you know, friends and community. She's really quite a leader and a go-getter, I think, so she really is a miracle. <laughs>
I'm Candace Chapman joining you from Geisinger's Janet Weiss Children's Hospital in Danville, Pennsylvania, where WBNG is in its 20th year of partnering with the Janet Weiss Children's Hospital and the Children's Miracle Network celebration to make sure that the hospital continues to provide the quality of care and specialized care that sick and injured children often need. And joining me now is Becky Drumheller with Child Life Services. Tell us a little bit about people who might be thinking of donating to Children's Miracle Network, what those funds might provide for Child Life Services. We use those dollars every day. We oftentimes will need to prepare children for what's going to be happening and what kinds of procedures they'll be going through or treatments here in the hospital. And the, the equipment that we use is very specialized and therefore very expensive. So dolls that might have a central line just like the child will be receiving surgery um, or those kinds of things. And that allow the children an opportunity to manipulate the things that are happening in the healthcare environment. Like at home they play with pots and pans in the kitchen, we offer them an opportunity to play with hospital items here in the hospital. Uh, in addition to that, CMN has really helped us in providing a lot of the fun things that are here, a lot of the things that we use for distraction, mm -hmm. all of the toys in our playroom. Once a month there's a special activity in the lobby that includes some kind of ice cream event. Another time in the month we offer a dinner and a movie with our families. So the kids can be kids while they're here being treated. Absolutely. All right, thank you so much. And if you would like to donate to the Children's Miracle Network, call 1-800-799-5437. Here in 2015, WBNG is celebrating our 65th anniversary of being on the air. And we're celebrating our 20th anniversary with Children's Miracle Network and the Geisinger Jenna Weiss Children's Hospital here in Danville, Pennsylvania. You can help sick and injured children in the area by calling 1-800-799-5437. Your donation provides the latest technology. It allows children to attend specialized summer camps, brings health education to the community, and a lot more. With your help, we can continue these efforts. To make it easy for you on our 20th anniversary with Children's Miracle Network, make a donation on your credit card. Save $20 for our 20th anniversary. Visa, American Express, MasterCard, or Discover. Call 1-800-799-5437. I'm Candace Chapman, joined by Matt and Jared from Binghamton University. BU has long been a supporter of the Children's Miracle Network. This year, in 2015, we are in our celebration, and you can help support it by calling 1-800-799-KIDS. They're going to tell us about a fun way on campus that they support Children's Miracle Network. Tell us about Dance Marathon. So basically, Dance Marathon is an initiative that started at a lot of different universities and takes place at over 200 campuses across the country. A few, two years ago, we brought it to our university, and basically, we stand for those who can in order to raise funds for our local children's hospital, Janet Weiss, in Danville, Pennsylvania. And how much did you raise this year? Um, so actually today we're here raising, um, giving this check for $10,000 um, to Children's Miracle Network. Do you find that surprising you're able to raise so much money for CMN? Um, I mean, I think it's incredible. $10,000 is obviously not something very small. Um, I think most people say, oh, we give a few hundred dollars, that's enough. But I mean, $10,000, that's a whole new game room or that's a whole new equipment device for these children. It sure is. And you did this because you wanted to raise the student spirit on campus. Yeah, um, we came up with the idea to get, you know, people involved. We said, we want Binghamton to be the school that everyone loves to go to, everyone hangs out, all 15,000 students are friends. Um, then we said, now we can make it a fundraiser, and that's how we came up with this idea. All right. And you both feel it's important to support CMN. Yeah, no, definitely. It's great to give back to the local community. Um, Binghamton's treated us very well, and luckily, um, I haven't had a direct experience with the hospital, but when you visit the hospital, you get to see the, ch the smiles that you put on the children's face faces, and you see that they're very strong people, and that the problems that you have in your own daily life are really minute compared to what they're going through. All right, thank you. Help support those smiles. Call 1-800-799-KIDS. Twins were born at 27 weeks gestation. They were born um, at an outlying hospital up in Tawanda. My mom had rushed me to the ER. When we went in, they said I, was, I wasn't dilated any, but I was having contractions. Um, I was there probably an hour, and I started having more pains, so they um, checked me, and I was four centimeters. So they rushed me to the operating room, and uh, they said that I was definitely going to have the babies. It was a really uh, stressful moment. I didn't know what to think. The doctors had told me it was going to be okay. When they cut me open, they took Matthew first. He wasn't breathing. Um, they tried to keep me calm because they said the baby was here, but he wasn't crying or anything. And then they said we're taking the baby B, and he come out and he screamed. Michael, Daddy screamed really hard. 
So at the same time, I was grieving, thinking I lost my first baby, and happy that my second one was healthy. They took Michael to the nursery because he was doing so well. They did still have to intubate him, but he was doing well for a 27-week baby. About five or six minutes after Matthew was born, he finally started breathing and crying. So they wouldn't weigh them or anything until they flew them to Danville. It was a five-hour wait. So I was in recovery and I couldn't see them. They were in the same incubator together. The nurses that were in the helicopter told me that they had about a 25% chance of surviving. So it was really hard. So when the babies were born, they required um, uh, support for their breathing and were placed on ventilators right away and then were transferred down the Geisinger being ventilated. And when they arrived, their lungs were very, very sick um, and they needed um, what we call high frequency ventilation, which is what we use uh, when babies' lungs are very, very stiff. They got four doses of surfactant. Most babies only need one or two doses of surfactant. Um, and then they were able to come off the high frequency ventilator onto a conventional ventilator for another week and then we're on uh, continuous like a CPAP device, continuous positive air pressure for a couple of weeks after that. I had to stay in the hospital for four days so I couldn't even see them. When I got down there, it was they were really nice to me. Um, nurses were wonderful. I wouldn't have wanted anybody else with them. <laughs> it was probably like a week after they had been born and things were just rough. Michael had started to lungs collapse or something and uh, they told me that it was either giving him the steroid or he, we just had to let him go. It was really hard. So Michael actually had a much more difficult course than Matthew did. Um, Matthew was in the hospital until just before his due date. Once he got over his lung disease um, issues, um, he actually had uh, very, very few residual problems um, from being born so early. But his lung disease was very severe. Michael's lung disease was also maybe a little bit more severe than Matthew's, um, but Michael also suffered more problems with his uh, digestive system and where he really had difficulty tolerating any kind of feedings and any kind of formulas or milk um, and needed surgery uh, to help with that. And the combination of the digestive problems and his lung disease really prolonged his stay in the hospital. So he stayed here almost a couple months after his due date. So parents were traveling back and forth to here for a very long time. Matthew was there for two and a half months and Michael was four and a half months. They were really slow as far as talking, walking, things like that. Um, when the early intervention came out, they they were sure that Michael was never gonna walk, but he finally did at two years old. He was he was like two months shy of being two. So, but other than that, they're coming along really good. They're in sports. They they've caught up with children, um, their age. They. They are doing wonderful in school. I mean, they have some learning disabilities still, but they're, they're doing good. Children's Miracle Network funding in this case really helped us with the ventilators we used for the boys initially. Um, they were on high frequency oscillator ventilators, um, which are very specialized ventilators, mainly used in newborns and children. Um, they're very expensive, over $50,000 each, so not everybody has them. Um, and that's uh, been proven in our hands to be a little bit more gentle in ventilating babies whose lungs are very, very stiff. And we give those ventilators a lot of credit uh, for babies like these boys, the twins, Michael and Matthew. Um, when their lungs are so stiff, they have less chances of having holes develop in their lungs, um, less chances of developing really severe chronic lung problems. I know Michael does have some lung problems presently, but they might have been worse if we didn't have these ventilators. It is amazing. I don't know what I would have done without it. <laughs> Um, all the machines that they need. It's just, my kids probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the raising of the money. They've been good. They, they enjoyed being the Miracle Kids. Um, the boys were born over three months early. Um, if it hadn't been for the raising of the Miracle Network, they probably would not be here today. Um, the machines and everything that people donate for that goes to everything for these kids, like everything. So it's a really, really important, important thing to do. 
Walmart is one of the companies that has long supported the Children's Miracle Network celebration. Celebration 2015 is underway supporting locally the Geisinger Janet Weiss Children's Hospital in Danville, Pennsylvania. And joining us from the Johnson City Walmart are AJ and Doreen. And AJ, how much did you raise this year? We raised $7,934. Thank you so much. And Doreen, tell us a little bit about what the Johnson City Walmart does to help raise that money. Uh, we do a few things. We do um, cashier incentives for the cashiers at the registers. We have canisters that are around the store that people can put money into. And we also do casual Fridays where the associates can pay to be able to wear jeans. Okay, so um, involving the customers as well as the staff. Yes. Thank you both so much. And you can help support the Children's Miracle Network, too. Call 1-800-799-KIDS. That's 1-800-799-5437. The Child Life Department's really here to help reduce the fear and anxiety of health care experience for children and their families. Um, it's our job to make sure that each child is given the right education in an age and developmentally appropriate way to know what to expect while they're here. Um, so we might be preparing children for various procedures or treatments that they'll be receiving while they're here, both in the outpatient clinic as well as in the inpatient hospital itself. Uh, we also provide all the distraction and fun things to do. So there's lots of child life programs that you'll see benefiting from Children's Miracle Network funding uh, because that enables us to really provide some fun distraction, distraction activities um, to keep kids either from being distracted from their pain and discomfort, or just to keep them happy and not bored. Children's Miracle Network um, funds really help us provide a variety of different things. All of our playroom toys, games, books, and puzzles are available through our CMN funding. We leave our playrooms open 24 hours a day uh, with the idea that sometimes healthcare treatments and routines and procedures and tests throw off a child's routine and they might be up a little bit later or a little bit earlier than they normally would be at home. Um, so we leave them open and accessible so that there are age appropriate and developmentally appropriate activities for them to have access to whether a child life specialist is in the building or not. Um, in addition to all of our playroom supplies, we provide some special programming. Uh, once a month we serve free of charge to our families and patients, dinner and a movie. And we'll go to the lobby and we'll have a buffet style dinner and we'll watch whatever new released movie is out. And it just gives the, chi the kids, the children and their families an opportunity to get out of their rooms, go socialize with each other and have a little bit different activity. Um, another thing that we do once a month also is to have a sponsored ice cream event usually around a magic show or uh, a concert with a musicianary from the area. Woody Wolf is gracious enough to take some time and come and thanks to CMN dollars we not only can fund some some of Woody's work but we can also provide the ice cream event for the families. So one month it might be magic and floats and the next month it might be a concert and Sundays. And that's just a wonderful morale booster and the families again really appreciate that. Children's Miracle Network funds help supply shadow buddies, which are a small doll, which can be tailored, if you will, to be a lot like what the child's experiencing here in the hospital. So if the child has a specific kind of IV, so does their shadow buddy doll. If the child will be going into the operating room with monitor patches, a blood pressure cuff, and a pulse oximeter light on their finger, then their shadow buddy has three monitor stickers, a blood pressure um, cuff, and a white and a little red oxygen light. And it helps kind of the child have control in, in, in exploring their environment. Much like they'd be sitting on the floor of the kitchen banging pots and pans at home, we like to give them these items to do medical play and explore the medical environment that they have here in the hospital and in the outpatient clinic. It offers a sense of control and a sense of ownership uh, to that child. Um, we're also careful to make sure it's developmentally appropriate. So the two-year-old might have a Fisher-Price medical play kit in the doll with the line, uh, and we call it medical play. Uh, with the teenagers, it's medical rehearsal, and they have actual syringes and the vials of medicines to at least kind of see and, and touch and experiment with, with this medical teaching doll. That, again, 
is an expensive, costly piece of equipment um, that we need to make sure is eligible to be cleaned in between each patient and our Children's Miracle Network funding helps us take care of making sure we have not only that equipment to help the kids understand but then can provide them a similar shadow buddy should we see in their play and in their exploration that they might need a little more time to manipulate these kinds of things and get used to them. Oftentimes our newly diagnosed diabetics have an opportunity to drop insulin and, and administer AccuChex and insulin injections to their doll before they have to do it to themselves. And we find that that really helps make that transition, that they've got that opportunity to manipulate that equipment. We have some specialized equipment that we use with the children. In particular, um, there are some life-size dolls really that are very specific with different uh, central lines or metaports and breviacs, pick lines, things that are medical devices that children receive while they're here and receiving treatment while they're here in the hospital. And Oftentimes, you know, these IVs, these specialized central lines, become a part of the child's body and their life for several weeks and can be months, and for our oncology patients, years. And so we work really hard at preparing the child and the family prior to the placement of those lines by using our specialized medical play dolls. And the really nice thing about these Medican dolls is that there is a central line in the doll that looks just like the central line when the child wakes up from the sedation or the you know anesthesia from the procedure of placing that line so that they have an opportunity to manipulate it. Look at what it, you know what color is it? What are they going to see, hear, feel, taste, smell in the experience of going through each step leading up to their sedation or anesthesia induction. Another Children's Miracle Network funded um, program that we'd be unable to provide to any of the children if it weren't for CMN funding. And we have a variety of arts and crafts supplies, be it finger paints for the younger children or the tiny intricate beading projects for the older females, or perhaps it's a model kit uh, made out of wood and glue that's then painted uh, by a child. Um, and all of that is funded through CMN uh, with the idea, again, of age-appropriate activities that will help distract them oftentimes from their pain or just provide them a reason to get out of bed and ambulate around the floor and get to the game room and to be active and involved. WBNG is proud once again to be part of the Children's Miracle Network. Here in 2015, we're celebrating our 20th year with Children's Miracle Network and Geisinger Janet Weiss Children's Hospital here in Danville, Pennsylvania. Help by donating by calling 1-800-799-5437. Help us support the efforts to raise money for sick and injured children in our area. During our last 20 years, we've raised more than $2 million thanks to people like you. It can't be done without you, so call right now at 1-800-799-5437, 1-800-799-KIDS.